Okay. Um, three things to remember about a story told in this fashion. The first is that scale doesn't matter. So here we have Mary, and she's living in this little tiny house um, with a donkey in the backyard that's not quite the right size either. So you just make things work. And notice that she has no face. So um, that's so you can imagine what Mary looks like. I bet you my Mary looks different from yours. I don't know. And then the last thing is that we invite the story with a song. Bible, Bible, tell your story. Speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know. Tell us how God loves us so. We have a little bit of a story and a little bit of readings. We have a mishmash today. Um, we have a psalm and we have a gospel reading and we have an epistle and we have Mother's Day coming up. So today, again, we're talking about Jesus. And Jesus tells us through Peter that we should build ourselves as though we were made of rocks, as though we were living stone, that we should be a spiritual house. And I wonder what your stones would be. I think the first stone that he learned was probably from his mother Mary and a gentle upbringing. And Joseph too, Joseph is a wonderful character, a carpenter who accepts what God tells him, although it's very unusual. <laughs> Mary and Joseph teach Jesus love. And I think the first, the first stone that any of us should have in our spiritual home is love. If we're going to be a build a spiritual self. Another lesson we can take from one of the apostles, Peter. One day, Jesus had spoken to a very large crowd. By the end of the day, he was tired. And he told the apostles to go ahead, go over to the other side of the, of the sea and wait for him there. So they got in a boat. And they all headed over to the other side of the lake, except they weren't making very good progress because the wind was against them. So they couldn't get there. A lot of wind. A lot of wind. <laughs> Jesus, meanwhile, was recovering up on the mountain. And often after he spoke to people, he would go away by himself and sort of resustain himself, rebuild and refeed himself. Um, was spiritual food. And Jesus has, had gone up to the mountain and now he came down and he saw that the apostles were in the middle of the lake and hadn't gotten to the other side yet because of the wind, the incredible wind. Well, he thought, I, this is easy. Jesus walked on the water. And as he neared the boat, Peter thought, I could do this. I could go to him and I could walk on the water too. And Peter did. And then he saw and felt the wind and it was mighty. And down he went into the waves and Jesus lifted him up and helped get him to the boat where he'd be safe. And then they went to the other side. And I hope they could swim a little bit. Our Peter is an interesting apostle. His name means stone or rock. And I think we see in Peter what we want to be. We see that apostle that signifies faith, simple belief. Peter did walk on the water 
until he doubted. But until he doubted, he had the faith to do that. All those things that Christ could do. Before he died, Christ told Peter that Peter was the rock on which his church would be founded. Peter is his cornerstone. Not long before Christ died, he gathered his apostles and he told them that his father had prepared for them a house, a house with many rooms, room for everyone. And he was talking about heaven. He was talking about the spiritual house that we all will go to. One of our one of our writers today tells us that the foundation, the rocks upon which that house are built, are important. So I wonder today if you had to name the rocks that make up you and your spiritual house and the rocks that make up heaven, what would the name of those rocks be? Would it be from Mary, love? Would it be from Peter, faith? How else do you build with rocks the soul of yourself that you'll take to heaven? Bible, Bible, tell your story. Speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know. Tell us how God loves us so.